Hello there. Hey guys, what to watch for for Thursday in the NBA? We do have six games on. Let's take a look at them now. The first one, the Mavericks and the 76ers. Joshy Richardson against his former team. The last couple of games have been pretty good scoring games from Richo. He's sort of on the fringes of 12-team league value, so let's see what he's able to do. Can he keep some of that offense going um, and to push him into being maybe a must-roster player? I don't think he's going to get there. And then the other guy that we need to pay attention to is the burner. Jalen Brunson, a must-add 14-team league guy who's pushing into 12-team league value at the moment. Is he? Yeah, you know, what's his role going to be? Will he continue to get this thirty minutes a night? Will he push down and get 22, 23 minutes a night? How does he look? How does the shooting look? How does the passing look? How does he look when he plays alongside Luka Doncic as well? For the seventy sixes, I want to watch Shake Milton. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Milton has been um, playing a decent role in terms of minutes, but the production has been limited. I think with Curry missing last game and Curry's likely to be back in this game that there's not a huge amount to love there, but let's just have a look at what he can do, what his role looks like compared to guys like Thibault coming off the bench and can he get things back on track to where he was at the beginning of the season and then Furkan Korkmaz started in place of Curry, was out on the verge of being out of the rotation before last game, so do they keep him in the rotation? Does Isaiah Joe get those minutes? You'd have to think that Furky from Turkey goes back to playing his minutes off the bench, and Joe is on the outside looking in. That would be my understanding. Next game, the Magic and the Nets. Terrace Ross putting up some big numbers at the moment. He's getting steals, he's hitting threes, he's scoring, the usage is good. He's doing quite a lot for this team without Aaron Gordon, without Cole Anthony. I imagine it continues, and he's a must-roster player, while the Chief al Aminu. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. Big defensive numbers in the first two starts of him uh, of his uh, Magic career or Magic season. Um, I, I don't know, you know how much I believe in it. I don't know what his role is going to be when Gordon returns. But as a defensive streamer, he's up there with Derek Jones and up there with Matisse Thybul as guys that we can take a look at. And let's see what he's able to do. For the Nets, Kevin Durant will be able to get uh, out again. So the Shark, Bruce Brown. Baby shark, do, 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 do. Should get another start. Now, I don't imagine Brown is an 85% shooter like he was in the last game, but he is still at least someone who has some utility as a steel streamer and as an interesting high field goal percentage player. You've seen that efficiency really jump up from Brown this year. And then DeAndre Jordan, who is playing at a much higher level. I think it is helping him that Kevin Durant is out and that Jeff Green missed last game. So those other players who are taking minutes at center aren't taking those minutes at center. But as a rebound, a block, and a field goal percentage sort of player, he's providing okay replacements placement level value for 12 team leagues. And let's see how that looks in this one again with Kevin Durant sidelined. Next game, it is the Kings and the Nets. Uh, Nets, Knicks, sorry. Um, no Glenn Robinson the third. He's been waived by the Kings. Daquan Jeffries should be holding down that backup 3-4 role off the bench. What do his minutes look like, especially in a situation here with Hassan Whiteside ruled out? Jeffries, that will mean Bagley plays more at center. So maybe there's a 20 minute or night role here for Jeffries. He's just a deeper league guy and a guy to pay attention to, but we want to watch how his development goes. And then also Bagley, who I think will be a 30 minute a night player here. Um, that's with the absence of Whiteside and uh, the absence of Glenn Robinson, the permanent absence of Glenn Robinson. And they seem to be pumping these minutes into Bagley. It's not going particularly well for the Kings, but they are pumping the minutes into him. Let's see if he can do anything to make me uh, change my mind about him being a 12 team league player. For the Knicks, Derek Rose put up really big numbers last time against the Warriors. Now, his Knicks career so far had been down. He'd been low minutes. His production hadn't been 12-team worthy, but last game it was. So is he 20-minute a night Derek Rose, or is he 28-minute a night Derek Rose? Now, I think the minutes will push up because Alfred Payton is doubtful in this one. And if Payton is doubtful, then you're going to see, man, do they start Emmanuel quickly? I guess that's the big question. Do they start quickly, or does Rose get a start? Uh, will Thibodeau still have the issue with playing uh, rookies big minutes? There is a big opportunity to see what Rose can do and what quickly can do. And Rowan Barrett Jr., he's going to hopefully have the ball in his hands a little bit more with Peyton now. But will he get benched again in the fourth quarter? So Burks and Rose and Quickly and those sort of guys can play over him. It's been really poor from Barrett recently. And I don't think, well, you know that I don't think that he's a 12-team league player at this point. Next game, Clippers and Grizzlies. Serge Ibaka. Trending down in a big way. And I don't think that he is a must-roster 12-team league guy at this point. Just with everything you know, pushing back the way that it has, um, 22 minutes a night isn't enough. They're going small with Marcus Morris at center a lot more, and that's creating problems. The other guy who's trending down is Nick Batum. 
production from him is low. We know he's a low scoring player who gets some assists and gets some steals and has been really efficient this year. But it is an easy scenario you can see where Batum moves out of being a 12-team league guy. If the shooting regresses, if he loses two to three minutes, especially with a uh, poor playoff schedule, which the Clippers have, that could be a problem there too. For the Grizzlies, Justice Winslow has been force-fed a lot of minutes. He's been pretty poor in those minutes. Will they continue to force him those minutes? How do those minutes look if Dylan Brooks happens to play? Will he still get those 23 minutes a night? What does that mean for Bain and for Allen and for Brooks and for Anderson? And how does that all work for Winslow? I do not believe that he's a 12-team league guy. And his impact yeah, or his return also has an impact on the wave pool, DeAnthony Melton, who has been pretty good when he's played, but the problem is the minutes. And how do they work that out? Who is going to miss out? Will it be Allen? Will it be Melton? Will it be Bain, most likely? Will it be Brooks? Almost un- or, um, almost undoubtedly no. But there's just too many options there. And I want to see how they try and figure in DeAnthony Melton. Next game, it is the Wiggards. The Wiggards. No, it's not the Wiggards. It's the Wizards and the Nuggets. Flaming Mo Wagner. If you haven't seen it either... Uh, Adidas is bringing out some Flaming Mo shoes. Not Mo Wagner Signature Edition, Flaming Mo from The Simpsons. They're bringing out uh, those shoes. I want a pair. I'm almost surely won't get a pair, but I want a pair of Flaming Mo Adidas shoes. I am I am down. I don't I don't want the uh, squishy ones from the Quickie Mart that they're bringing out. I want the Flaming Mo ones. Anyway, Mo Wagner, good minutes, good production last game. Do we trust Scott Brooks? Of course we don't, but... As a flyer, as a streamer for Thursday, absolutely. And Russ Westbrook, the thing I'm impressed with with Westbrook, he has finally realized, I can't hit threes. I don't know why it's taken him this long, but he said, I can't hit threes, so I'm not taking them anymore. Therefore, field goal percentage, way up. Efficiency, way up. Production, way up as well. What a coincidence. When you stop doing the things you're absolutely shit out at, you become better. And that's what he's done. For the Nuggets, Monty Morris is pushing up in terms of playing time. He is an interesting stream option when you're looking for assists. I wouldn't say that he is the greatest option, but super low turnover. Unbelievable player in an assist to turnover league. Uh, Hit some threes, good scoring. Yeah, he's he's worth looking at. Well, Michael Porter, I thought, played much better last game. Good production from Porter in that one. He's going to get another opportunity to have a a bigger role in this game. Um, I'm always cautious about how Malone uses him, but there were encouraging signs in the last game. I'm not ready to fully trust the doctor in terms of the playing time, but no Harris, no Green, no Millsap, no Dozier again. So he's going to get that opportunity for big minutes once more. And the last game of the night is the Pelicans and the Bucks. Josh, the hitman Hart, will come off the bench again, almost undoubtedly. But what do his minutes look like? Um, will he continue to get those minutes over Eric Bledsoe? And then Lonzo Ball continues to play well. I just really want to pay attention to how he's looking, how his ball handling opportunities are with Zion playing point forward and with Brandon Ingram around. For the Bucks, Drew Holiday won't be playing most likely. He's listed as doubtful. So we get DJ Augustine, Dante DiVincenzo, and Bryn Forbes all pushing their minutes up. Now, all, all those players had big games against the Wolves because they won by about 70 points. So that doesn't tell us a huge amount. Um, so we want to see what DiVincenzo can do. And yeah, Augustin, as an interesting threes and assist streamer, I think is worthy of some of your attention. If you look at streamed options um, for category leagues, Faku Kompazzo with all those absences in Denver, Patrick Beverly for the Clippers. He's a guy to look at. Michael Carter-Williams as the Magic starting point guard. Monty Morris, as I mentioned, in Denver already. And then Jalen Brunson is a good category league streamer. And then for points leagues, Josh the Hitman Hart, Shake Milton, Jalen Brunson, Michael Carter-Williams, and Monty Morris are all guys that we can take a look at to add for Thursday's games. Guys, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. See ya.